So you might be wondering, how did I take this crappy shared drum kit that I probably couldn't sell for more than zero dollars if I offered free delivery and make it sound like this? Before, after, before, after. Well, it all started last week when a friend of the channel offered, nay, insisted on sending me a new gadget. What that was, and more importantly, whether it could work for you to kick up your drum recordings to a much higher level, regardless of the crappiness of your kit in this video. Stay tuned. This channel has been going strong for some years with, shall I say, basic drum audio. One, a two. The culprit? My trusty Zoom Q3 HD. Until around 2003 or 4, if you wanted to record anything other than camera audio, your only option was a mini disc player, which still sounded super compressed and crappy. Then Zoom mics came out and you could now get halfway decent audio for your gig clips. My camera work on the other hand, Let's just say baby steps. I got my Q3 HD in 2010, and let's just say I rested on my laurels. One, two, one, two. While the rest of the drum internet was upgrading their audio production. Play I was still going strong with my trusty Zoom. And the whole time I knew I needed to up my audio game, but it's hard to know where to start. Like, this is my shared practice spot. This being New York, I don't have a home studio. And I can't leave expensive mics in the room, so I'd have to set up and tear down every time. Plus, if I want to capture anything other than the sound of the crappy shared drum kit, I'd have to set up and tear down my own kit for every session. So I got lazy. Then, last week, a guy named Michael Brady Skoma offers to send me this device I've never heard of. The Yamaha EAD-10. At the time, I had no idea what this was. I googled it, and all I could see was it didn't look like a mic, and it wasn't cheap. In my mind, there were mics, there were audio interfaces, and there were computer programs like Pro Tools, Logic, or Ableton, or in my case, GarageBand. But the EAD is different. It stands for Electronic Acoustic Drum. In fact, let's let James from Better Music, who has a much better accent than I do, tell you more. It's actually two parts to the EAD-10. There's a main sound module, which is an electronic and an acoustic sound module, and a sensor unit that clips onto the bass drum. This has two microphones in it in an XY configuration, as well as a trigger in the mount. So, old way, your drum kit, however crappy, mics, and mostly you get what you pay for, audio interface, and software, where you hope you're a mixing and mastering maven so you can get a great mix out of the box. If any link in that very expensive and fragile chain is weak, the sound won't be great, as evidenced by this clip from when I was borrowing my friend's mic setup at my old studio. Three, four. Great kit, it was a Gretsch. Mediocre mics, mediocre soundboard, terrible mixing chops, equals barely decent audio. But the EAD takes a lot of those weak links out of the loop. At least that was the theory. But would it work? Twenty some odd minutes later, I was ready to try it. Hmm, sounds pretty distorted. Anyway, I figured out what I had gotten wrong. You have to tell your software to accept incoming audio from EAD. Otherwise, it defaults to AirPods. Yep, this crazy distorted sound wasn't some gated lo-fi filter. It was the sound my AirPods were picking up from across the room in their case. Which leads me to wonder, 
Are they listening to me? Nope, not gonna go there. Anyway, once I sorted out the audio input, it was time to test drive the module. This is probably the part of the video everyone's been waiting for. Just to review, here's the naked camera audio. Here's the zoom audio of the same clip. And here's the audio from the EAD on the most basic out-of-the-box mix, which I'll admit has a little more reverb than I would have used. But all the same, that's what I'm talking about. Crappy drums, doesn't matter. This little device is truly the stopgap, getting you 85% of the way to professional drum audio. Without nice drums or mics, and without putting a new head on or tuning a thing. Okay though, let's cut that audio. Because we're barely scratching the surface. That's just the out of the box drum sound. Wait till you hear some of the kits. So just like the V drums, you can use the EAD for any of the 700 or so, I think, pre-programmed kits. Here are just a few of the first ones. Here's Dance 8. Here's Reverse Gate. Here's Flanger. Looking for that DJ Shadow sample sound? Why not check out Bat Splat? Want to channel your inner Phil Collins? Check out everybody's favorite, and I watched a number of YouTube reviews of this. It's called It's 1985. But my early favorite, Compressor. In fact, let's see how it sounds with tracks. This is Alpha Mist's song, No Don't, slash Incomplete. After everything that we gave See all we sacrificed and the love we made This is prime territory for the compressor sound. But I also want to compare it to my old Zoom mic. So I've asked my video editor to sync the clips so we can add and take away tracks. Here's no don't slash incomplete with the zoom mic. After everything that we gave, see all we sacrificed and the love we made. Now here it is with the EAD with the compressor sound. After So it's almost like going from mono to stereo, right? Which got me thinking, what other clips can I cover? Like, what if I wanted to do some fusion, like knee body? Here's drum battle with the compressor sound. How about some stadium rock? Which will almost certainly get me copyright struck, even though this is clearly fair use. Here's Take Me With You from Prince. The perfect pairing with the It's 1985 setting. But I know what you're thinking. What about jazz? The EAD's primary value add, in my opinion, is that it circumvents the native drum sound to take your crappy kit and lack of expensive mics out of the equation. But what about a genre that relies heavily on native drum sound? There's so much analog in this recording. Reviewers have claimed the EAD can blend native sound and triggers. This guy got a great native drum sound from the EAD's first setting, Arena, with zero effects. Plus, I've got a secret weapon. Michael sent me an extra, a snare drum trigger. I also have the perfect collab in mind. In 2015, Ben Wendell did a bunch of YouTube collabs, which eventually turned into his Seasons record, including this gem with Galad Hexelman called October. This is drumless, so there's nowhere to hide. Let's see how well the arena setting works for this.
So guys, that's my out of the box review for the Yamaha EAD10. If you're a three or four with your sound production using something like zoom mics, this will take you to like a 7.5 in a hurry. It's like the iPhone 11 camera of audio compared to your flip phone from the early 2000s. Or maybe like the Canon Rebel I'm recording this on with all of the automation and defaults. Is it artisan level sound? Of course not. That's what we've got expensive mics and great engineers for, but it will up your game a lot. Just a few words over what I didn't cover in this video. Customization. We barely scratched the surface of what this device is capable of using only the automated presets. Practice. I wouldn't recommend using this for more than 50% of your practice, because the native sound will still give you a better picture of your touch. The EAD corrects for some deficiencies in your touch that you won't get away with with native sound. I'd also recommend when you're making an evaluation recording to tease out your weaknesses, you use something like an iPhone. But can the EAD take a crappy kit and make it sound expensive in a hurry in multiple recording regimes? I'd say that's an emphatic yes. Thanks again to Michael for the generous donation. So guys, maybe you're a long time follower of this channel, or maybe you've tuned in just for the audio review, but I can tell you that the greatest mics on earth will not make up for lack of good time, touch, and feel. And that's exactly what I cover in my drum courses, the coaching course and the practice course, both of which are something on the order of four to six months of studying with me for around the price of a single lesson. But we only open those up a few times a year and we don't open them to the general public. You have to be on the insiders list, the insiders list which is just a fancy word for my email list. If you'd like to join that and also get a freebie, I'll send you three mini courses in three weeks that'll improve your playing more than it's improved in the last six months. Three weeks, six months. If you click the link below the player and enter your email address in on the next page. Been Real Dudes, see you again next week in another lesson of the week. get out what I gotten wrong. Ah. Uh, 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 mm.